At least in the early days, there was some thinking that uh, ICTs could play a big role in uh, poverty reduction. And we saw that in the early days, that, that didn't actually happen, or at least it was too complex an issue to, to actually understand what that relationship was between information and communication technologies uh, and poverty. In order to, to better understand the relationship between uh, information and communication technologies and poverty, uh, IDRC decided to support a set of projects that would look at that issue, especially from a demand perspective. So how were the poor using ICTs? And the first project it funded was in Africa called Research ICT Africa, which brought together uh, at least 12 different researchers from 12 different African countries. Another one was in Asia uh, with a partner uh, called Learn Asia based in Sri Lanka. And then a, a, a third partner was in Latin America called DIRSI, which focused on um, about eight or, eight or nine countries in, in Latin America. And their goal was to actually better understand how the poor were accessing uh, information and communication technologies and why and to, to what extent uh, were they doing that? Well, it's one of the greatest public policy success stories in the world, uh, the aware, making available of uh, mobile voice telephony to poor people. On the bottom of the bottom of the pyramid, it's just all about access. If you apply for a job as a security officer or in a supermarket, if you can't leave a number, how will they get back to you? And someone that can leave a number has a competitive advantage and will get the job over you. So you just have to have a, a mobile phone, despite of the profession. Whether it's a housekeeper, day laborers for painting or building houses, whether they are being called in to help with the harvest of any, any type. If you don't have a mobile phone, you are excluded. And so on, on, the, on the very bottom, it's just about access, being reachable. Having maybe uh, 10 US cents loaded for emergency calls and so on. And then if you go a little bit higher, still in the bottom of the pyramid, but in the, on the top, top end or higher end, then it becomes a usage issue. The cheaper it is, the more coordination is being possible. And uh, for many Africans that come from a rural environment into an urban environment, they, they have to change, they have to adapt. Living is no longer free, transport is an issue. Many cities like Lagos or Accra or Johannesburg, you cannot really walk. Either it's a little bit too dangerous or the distances are very far, so you have to pay for transport. And uh, having a mobile phone allows to, tra to cut down on, on transport and, and coordinate the life. So at the moment it's unthinkable not to have a mobile phone anymore in Africa. You know, the first thing we saw is uh, poor people adopting ICT, specifically mobiles. So the question was, why? Why are they doing that? How does it help? And does it really help? So we, in 2007, um, implemented a survey in seven countries in Latin America. And we wanted to find out more about the, why are they using it? How are they using it? The unique value that uh, this book on the information lives of the poor is going to bring to the table is the fact that nobody has actually compared and contrasted the different regions, Latin America, Africa, and, and Asia, on these issues of how the poor use ICTs um, and to what extent they play a role in poverty reduction. So this is going to be a great opportunity to actually uh, compare these different things and see to what extent there are commonalities and to what extent there are differences amongst those different regions.